Hey Bears, Eric here. I don't have a lot of time today, but I just want to take a moment to talk a little bit about all of this internet discourse around Star Wars, the Acolyte. I made a review for this over on my Eric's Reloaded channel. If you want to hear my thoughts on the first two episodes, you can head over there. I'll put a link up in the corner here. You can go check it out. Uh, I actually really enjoyed it. I think it's a breath of fresh air, but I talk in more detail on that in my review. So head over there and please check that out. Let's take a look at some of the discourse going on online right now uh, in regards to the series. I'm seeing a lot of really interesting, you know, typical chuddy takes on anything related to Star Wars. It really has become this uh, campaign, like this, this circle of this group of people on social media and on YouTube that are really just out to make Star Wars look bad at all costs. That really is the goal at this point. There's no other uh, answer for what they're doing other than just trying to make Star Wars look bad at any given moment. Now, here's a thumbnail for a video made by Nerd Roddick. I haven't watched the video, but the thumbnail jumped up on my timeline, and I thought, oh, what is the joke with this thumbnail? The word lame, obviously done in the typical Nerd Roddick way to grab attention for people to click on the video, but then you have a mandala here uh, with obvious Photoshop done to her face, which again is typical nerd Roddick. And then the joke is there are white people wearing a black woman's hair. That's the joke. That's the entire joke. And then of course they throw Harvey Weinstein in next to, uh, Leslie because they keep trying to push this idea that because she worked with Harvey, that somehow she's the only person in Hollywood ever that has ever worked with somebody that is in the industry since the 70s the the for metaphorically speaking the blood on the hands of hollywood because of harvey weinstein goes far beyond leslie but this is their they keep using this it's their gotcha against her specifically because she worked with harvey as did a ton of people it's a pretty big deal uh but the the joke here is that there are white people wearing a black woman's hair and um yeah, I guess we're supposed to laugh at that. And while we're talking about nerd erotic, we might as well talk about this one. This isn't just a complaint that he's talked about. I've seen other people discussing this as well about a fire in space. As if Star Wars, over the years, even as far back as the original trilogy, um, as if they didn't have fire present in space battles. So... This is what we talk, when we use good faith, bad faith arguments and good faith, bad faith criticism, um, if you're giving any kind of criticism that could be used constructively, there's no such thing as good or bad faith criticism in that regard. But when you are looking at something like this, this is like quintessentially what bad faith is. It's nerd Roddick completely dismissing that fire has occurred in other versions of Star Wars specifically to try and make the Acolyte look bad. And the reason why that's bad faith is it's misleading, number one. And number two, what are we supposed to learn from that as viewers? What are they supposed to learn from uh, from that as creators? If it's already been done and it's already something that's been in canon in Star Wars for years, what are they supposed to learn from that? The only thing that we could see here is that he is, he is holding this show to a different standard than all of the stuff that he usually props up and says is, is uh, amazing and perfect. And just to reiterate this, this is the shot from the OG trilogy of an explosion, fire stuff happening in space. This isn't the only one. I just wanted to throw one in there to show you guys what I'm talking about. Again, this is like if I were talking about good faith and bad faith, this would be what a bad faith criticism would be because there's no, there's nothing that you can learn from it at all to make the product better. So it's essentially a misrepresentation um, in a way to make your argument valid. And, and it just isn't because this has happened in other Star Wars properties before. Here's everyone's least favorite film reviewer, the critical drinker, who says something quite interesting here. And I retweeted this with my thoughts, but I'm going to say it here in case you're not following me on Twitter. Um, I think I despise every single thing about Star Wars now. That means there's no gray area on that statement despising every single thing about Star Wars now, which means no longer a fan. You are no longer a fan of it. You have stated that you despise everything about Star Wars. Like, there's nothing even remotely worthwhile about the franchise anymore. It's anti-entertainment. Now, I could argue against this if I wanted, but ultimately, if someone decides they don't like something anymore and they don't think it's good, I feel like it's totally valid for them to be like, I don't like this anymore. I don't think it's good. 
And then the next step to that would be, I'm not going to support it. I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to talk about it. My uh, retweet of this, I said, there's no, no one is forcing you to watch something that you don't want to watch. There's no actual, um, you know, rule or law that says that you have to watch Star Wars if you despise every single thing about it. You can simply disconnect from that kind of entertainment when it comes to movies, TV shows, um, streaming stuff. You, you don't have to watch those things unless, and there's a little asterisk on that, unless you find it imperative for you to talk about it because there is a monetary value in doing what you're doing. There is an incentive for him to make sure that everyone knows how much he hates and they hate Star Wars. Critical Drinker and Nerdrotic, two of the largest uh, creators in the Chud space, right? Uh, in this Grift Tube space. They are no longer fans of this stuff. I would say they haven't been fans for a while now, but they continue to act like they are. You can totally be a fan of the older stuff and be like, I love the old stuff. I want to talk about the old stuff. But if you keep engaging with stuff that you don't like, there has to be another reason why. You, you either really do like it and you're lying to everybody, which could be the case. I'm not going to say I believe that. It could be the case. Or you're doing it because there's a financial reason for it and um, it allows you to you know, stay at the top of these search results and stuff on YouTube. Um, so yeah, that's that's the only reason you would continue to beat yourself up over something you don't like. Here's another one that I retweeted and commented on, but I want to talk a little bit more about it here in this video, is from Joel Berry, somebody who oh, always has bad takes. The Acolyte is a queer Marxist vandalization of the myth of Star Wars. And the Acolyte, the Force, is a metaphor for cultural hegemonic power. The Jedi are a metaphor for cisgender white oppressors who hoard that power for themselves. Yes, it really is that obnoxious and stupid. And I've come to realize that the reason why some of these folks have an issue with this is we are getting stuff from famous IPs, shows, movies from famous IPs that don't revolve around white guys. But there is a threat to that for a lot of these folks. They are arguing for representation. That's what they're doing. They are arguing for representation. The same thing that they complain that like gay people in my community, you know, black people, women, whatever it might be, when they say they want representation, they keep getting pushback from white guys who are threatened that they are no longer the center of the universe of entertainment. And so there's this weird situation where their immediate defense of that is to sort of make it seem like everything a diverse group does, a marginalized group does, is insidious, it's evil, it's somehow oppressive, it is trying to erase white people. And this is what they do. They put this out into the world. That is what this tweet is. This tweet is a little bit more than a dog whistle. There, I think the dog whistling stuff is kind of gone now. I mean, we, we can kind of see and read through this. Um, but it really comes down to the fear of, of not being number one anymore. It's the fear of not being king of the hill. It's the fear that these brands are no longer going to pander to you. It's the fear that capitalism is reaching out beyond your community and you value yourself because of that capitalism. And that's how you see yourself. And, and so I do believe that that's what this kind of reaction is. It is just this idea that you're going to be finally in, in a game where you have to actually play at your highest level. And they don't want that. They want that privilege that came along with being like, you know, straight white men, straight white cisgender men. Now I'm going to try and clue this. I don't know if it's going to get taken out. If this does get removed from the video, I do apologize, but I will talk about it after the clip a little bit more so people understand. We're going to watch this clip and then I want you guys to, uh, I have something to say about it and I want to hear what you have to say as well. But let's, wa let's watch this clip and sort of um, see what great moments uh, in the Acolyte writing is here in this clip. Do you think that... No. May is dead. I saw her die. A few moments later. May is alive. I believe you. Do you... All right, so the idea of the bad writing there is that Saul, the Jedi Master, says that he saw May die and he thinks she is dead. And that is for dramatic effect. It is to let us know that he is not being completely forthcoming about everything. It's quite possible he knows something that he's not telling people. It's quite possible there's another story going on that we're not sure. It's part of the mystery. And when he reaches out 
to Osha and she says what she says to him, what that's supposed to convey to us as viewers is that her emotional state and the reverence that he has for Osha makes him change his mind because she knows that he thinks that May is dead. She thinks May is dead. They all believe that May is dead. So it isn't like she all of a sudden was, she was withholding information from him that she's known all these years. She's like, oh, by the way, I, I've always known she was alive and I'm just finally telling you. No, she believed that May was dead as well. So what we're supposed to learn there is that because Osha believes this and she tells Saul this, he then believes it as well. It's to show how much he respects, trusts, and loves this character. That was what they were trying to convey. It's not bad writing. It is It is trying to convey something to the viewers and not everyone got it because empathy is absent on a lot of these incels. The last thing I want to talk about is this clip that's being shared around. I think in wokeness might've shared it first, uh, but it's a clip of a mandala on the daily show with Trevor Noah. And it's from 2018. I believe I will double check that, but I believe it is 2018. Let's watch the clip and then we'll talk about it. Here we go. When people watch the hate you give, what, what do you want them to walk away with? Cause I know everyone has a slightly different feeling. Um, well, I mean, white people crying actually was the goal. Um, <laughs> we... <laughs> it was the goal. But this is another one of those bad faith situations because that interview, that clip that we're seeing, which is already truncated, there's a much longer clip out there that gives more context. But outside of that, it is a small clip from an interview from 2018 where she's talking about the hate you give which was a project that explores the themes of racism, police brutality. Um, and it really was contextually about getting a lot of that stuff out there. Her speaking about those things, you know, talking about the stuff that was occurring in that particular film, which was about some heavy, heavy commentary. Now you could argue about that film. You could argue about things that happened that the film touched on, like all of those are fine. But to take this clip, which is already on a show like, like The Daily Show, which doesn't take culture and politics so seriously, it is sort of tongue in cheek. So this is in tone for what this show is, which is another, again, bad faith moment by sharing this clip. But to take this out of context and try to apply it to the current Star Wars project that Amanda is working on is absolutely insane to me. It is insane. But that's all these people have. All they have is to go back to old stuff, pull stuff out of context. They did it with Rachel Zegler. Now they're doing it with Amanda. They did it with Charmino by Chinoy. They did it with her as well. And it's something egregious about looking back at these things that these projects that have deeper meanings like the hate you give and saying, Oh, now look at this. This applies to star Wars right now. This is applies. It applies to star Wars right this second. No, it doesn't. It does not. And the simple fact is that when we have these kinds of things that touch on uh, racism or in the case of Charmin, we're talking about acid attacks and stuff like that. When we have these kinds of things happening. It is extremely petty to go back and try to use that against people involved with making something like Star Wars. As if there haven't been movies and films and TV shows made by people who did dramatic, true story type films that dealt with heavy subject matter. And then they were voice, voicing animation or doing some family-friendly film later on. You don't hold that same microscope or that magnifying glass up to people that do that when they're not women or people of color or gay people, that same scrutiny is not applied. And what exactly would this criticism lead to, to a Mandela or anybody on Star Wars? Absolutely nothing. Hence, bad faith. I don't want to keep you folks too much longer, but I do want to talk about this clip very briefly before I wrap this up. So there's a clip going around from the wrap where we have um, Amandala and Leslie talking about the show, obviously having fun with the interview. It's not very serious where she jokes about R2-D2 being canonically a lesbian, which is clearly a joke in the interview. But all of these people that want to make racist jokes, misogynistic jokes, homophobic jokes, when they do that, their immediate defense is, oh, 
it's just a joke, bro. You're taking it too seriously. You're triggered. You're soy. You're a snowflake. But then when you have two people attached to this property here making some jokes in an interview, all of a sudden they're being 100% serious and all of these people get triggered by it. Snowflakes, soys. This is as getting triggered by an interview where two women are joking about Star Wars. And he did the same thing when he was on stream with Eric July talking about this. Literally, it's so stupid. The Acolyte has already, I think it's the best premiere numbers wise on Disney Plus all year so far. Um, it seems like it's well received by critics outside of the review bombing that's been happening. That was happening hours before the episodes even went live. It's just like if you, and I'll say this again, if you have to review bomb something, then you are admitting that you are wrong about it. If you have to go out and proactively astroturf and review bomb something, then that doesn't mean it's objectively bad. It means you lost and that is your cope behavior. Your cope behavior is to review bomb something because you know there's a possibility that people might like it. And that kind of manipulation is 100% cope. Uh, just be aware of all this stuff. All these people are idiots. And, you know, there are some valid criticisms, just like with anything, movies or TV shows, but they are completely drowned out by this histrionic behavior from so many people in this space, particularly the big players. Uh, there's some stuff with Star Wars theory I didn't even talk about in here because I just don't want to keep you guys forever. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. I'm out. If you enjoy this video and you want to get more content like this, make sure you join the revolution, be part of the revolution, and subscribe to my channel. Leave a like down below and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on all of this, and I will see everyone in the next video. Take care.